What is going on, everyone, and welcome to the Stock Trends channel. Thanks so much for tuning on, and we are talking about the short slayer, ticker symbol MRIN. This stock has been on an absolute tear since under $2. Look at where it's at. It's up over 26 in pre-market this morning. So we're looking at tip ranks right here. Again, this is a stock that has gone, you know, mega miles past fundamental value and tip ranks is a really great fundamental value place they also do have a technical feature as well and we like to dive deeper in technicals here on this channel so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about why this stock is up and the potential that it has going forward because it seemingly continues to go more and more and more so a couple weeks back actually about a little over a week and a half ago here's the news that mrin comes out with okay they integrate with Instacart ads. That was the news. No, no, nothing in, insanely crazy. That was the news. There was no, you know, crazy numbers thrown out. All the numbers we kind of got in this press release in terms of like dollar amounts was that Marin's bringing its experience helping advertisers optimize over $40 billion in digital advertising spent on the rapidly growing platform. So that's a substantial news right there. However, Fundamentally speaking, I think it's very fair to say that based on their prior numbers, their prior performance, this company, right, that we've been seeing revenues, sale, all their numbers, profits have been going down, right? If you look back through the history, that's what you'll see. Now, this news is obviously, you know, great news. At the time, it was great news. Stocks popped up, you know, 50%, 100%, and that was that. However, it started to hold up, and it kept holding and holding and holding, Take a look at this daily chart right here. Stock pops up first day, goes up to over three bucks. Awesome, right? It was down under about 150. Goes up to over three. Wow, you know, stock's up over 100%. Crazy. Next day, it keeps going and actually hit up to over 450. And then the next day, it went up to over seven. The next day, hit up to over 18. Pulled back down to about 10. Found 10 to be support. Then push hit highs up over 19, hit about 20 bucks, then hit 25. And so far here in the pre-market hours, we have hit 28.24. Now, the broker we are using here is Webull. There'll be a link in the pinned comment and description box to get some free stocks when you sign up, deposit 100 bucks, and you can trade from 4 a.m. all the way to 8 p.m. Why is that important? Well, look what happened here at 4 a.m. The stock gapped up from just about 21, where it closed on Friday after hours at 8 p.m. And it gapped up here to 26.71 within the first 10 minutes of the market being open at 4.10 a.m. is where that happened, okay? So that's why it's important to have access to extended hours trading or full extended hours trading, which is why we like to use Weeble right here, okay? So if we wanna zoom things back out and take a peek, okay? What we're noticing right here is that we're looking at the one hour chart. Stock just held up. It just didn't die, essentially what happened, okay? And why did this happen and why is this continuing to go up? Well, it's because of something called the float. So if we go over to finviz.com, what are we gonna see with MRN? We see a shares float of under 10 million, roughly 10 million shares. So, so what is important? Why is that important? That's how many shares we're able to trade, okay? So think about this. If you look at a stock, for example, like an AMC, and okay, AMC, crazy run. It's actually still holding up over 50 bucks as we speak. They have a 448 million float. So let's just say, let's call it 500 million. 500 million shares for AMC. You go to MRIN and you have 10 million shares. That's important because this is also a very cheap stock. At the time, it was a sub $5 stock, okay? You do the math, sub $5 stock, 10 million shares available, $50 million dollars ties up that entire float. So you start doing the math here and it shows you that when you get volume, look at the volume we saw on the first day. We saw volume here of nearly 200 million. Then we had a 72 million candle, then we had 300 million, the next day after that 354 million shares traded in one day. Now this is only a 10 million float. So you can kind of get the sense as to how much money is being thrown at this stock and why it made such a crazy move. And I think a lot of people who are potentially new and who are finding this stock now are realizing the potential and squeeze potential that penny stocks have in a sense. So you can call it a penny stock. Everyone has different classifications. We're not talking OTCs. We're talking a stock that is now traded right now on the NASDAQ. This is a stock that anyone pretty much has access to trade. No commissions on most brokers to trade it. So you see how it plays out. Now, they're showing a short float of one5 nine. I, I, that's not true. That's not accurate. There's a lot of shorts in this stock, but at the same time, I think a lot of shorts are realizing it's not even worth shorting this stock overnight. If you want to look for an intraday move and up and a down and, and play in a short-term price action, that's one thing. 
but looking for a larger move, a lot of people got burned and, you know, it was very, very obvious in a sense of a short back then because saying, okay, you know what, this is good news. The stock's up over 100%. Great, but look at their history. Let's get, you know, their next earnings report to come out and let's see what we get there. That could change things because the past couple of earnings, the past couple of years, the stock has been, the company's seemingly, you know, number-wise has been going downhill. And so I think that's where a lot of shorts got suckered in and the stock held up, held up, held up. Now, how can you make sure that you're aware of this and you don't get caught up in a short squeeze like this? Or how can you notice this for the future? Well, after a stock makes a big move, you know, generally speaking, you don't want to be going long because you're putting yourself at risk, right? Why would you want to be going long a stock that, you know, you're, you're seeing massive risk? Well, what you could watch is, is hey, how it's holding up. And what MRIN did is it held up here, it pushed up, hit up to about three bucks, and it held up at around 250 or so. And it kept stair-stepping its way on up the next day and a half, and it didn't die. It didn't have a full flush out. It didn't drop back down towards under $2. It didn't drop out like that. And that was kind of the signal that this is holding up, holding up, holding up. And at the same time, no offering. A lot of penny stocks will do an offering. A lot of these companies will, will do an offering. Their, their intention here is to pump up their stock, get attention on their stock with news, and then drop an offering to raise capital so that either they can cash in or they can then fund the next thing they want to go and do. We just haven't gotten that. And many times that's what ends up killing the momentum. And we didn't see that. That's also dilution, which can help increase the, the share float, which makes it difficult for this to happen. That didn't happen here. And so that's what we're seeing as a product of MRIN. Now, when a stock is reaching these crazy levels, what do you what do you do? How do you figure out where it's going to go? At this point in time, you want to be looking to the every $5, every $10. It's going to be very, very key. We hit up to 25, 60 or so. So now it's looking like 30 bucks will be a fair target to watch. 30 bucks, a kind of round number, makes it pretty easy. I'll sell at 30, I'll sell at 25, right? Those are areas you want to be watching going forward. So every five to $10 will be key. If we zoom things out and take a look at the weekly chart on MRIN, here's where you might be able to get some more attention or get some more uh, ideas in terms of price targets. So we do have some resistance here. Uh, back up around $29. I can draw a line in there for us as well. So $29 will be an area to watch on MRI. And after that, wouldn't be surprised if 30 bucks will be an area to watch. And then after that, that 37. So 35 to 37 will be an area to watch as well. So that's what we'll be watching here on MRIN. We'll see if the momentum can continue. This stock has been beaten down for sure. Low float stocks, the recipe is there for a continued run. And at this point, right, people are, are, are throwing out crazy numbers. It really comes down to those who are looking to, again, buy and hold in a sense, because it's not a large float. You can get a good group of people together who wanted to buy up, you know, a couple hundred shares each. You do the math on that, it starts to add up and there's less and less shares available. So this thing can really move. So there you guys have it. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. Consider subscribing for more videos just like this. And also we'll have those links down below to Weeble and to TipRanks, the best research platform there is out there. If you like the content here, good chance. If you like the content on our other channels, we'll leave links in the description box for our other channels as well. Thanks so much and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.